Jesus. Amen. And amen. God is so worthy of praise and worthy of glory and honor. Amen. 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 Well, at least the worship team agree with me in Jesus' name. It is so good to see everybody today. Welcome to you all. We trust that you've had a great start to the new year, and I count it a real privilege to be here preaching on the second Sunday. Yeah. Amen of the year. And I uh, thank God and uh, thank him that he's given me a word to speak into your lives today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm looking around. I'm so glad to see everybody. I'm very happy to see my grandsons in church. Amen. Although they just walked out when their granddad has come to the lectern. I trust that there's no correlation there. Amen. Between that. Uh, but it's so good to see many of you that we haven't seen before for a while. And those who've flown in from the U.S. of A., welcome back in Jesus' name to our jet-setting congregation. Amen. <laughs> good to see you all. Amen. Well, I'd like to share with you a word that I feel that God has given me to share with you today. And if you have a Bible and you'd like to turn there with me, it's we're going to start off in Isaiah chapter 30 and read verse 21. And then we're going to read a passage of scripture that you will usually hear read at funerals. And what a great shame that for some people, the only time they hear it is at funerals in John chapter 14. Uh, Isaiah 30 and verse 21, though, says these words, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it, whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. This is the way, walk ye in it. And I want to say to you today that if you have come to this place, which I believe you have done, for the purpose of knowing what God wants you to do and where he wants you to go, I want, you to, I want to say to you, this is the way, walk ye in it. Now, you'll notice that the scripture says this is the way, walk in it. Amen. There's something to be said for running. And in fact, Brother Sean, who is our doing excellent teaching this morning. Thank you, Sean, for reminding us about the prayer wheel. I felt inspired when I heard that. Now, Brother Sean likes running. Now, he's very welcome to run. Amen. You know, he can, I hear that he runs in all kinds of weather when it's, and I think his wife runs as well. Sister Carrie, you're very welcome to run. But the Bible tells us that this is the way you are to walk in it. Now, for some of us, we would like to hear the scripture say, this is the way, drive ye in it. Amen. Particularly if we were preaching in the US of A, you know, there are some places, Patrona, that do not have what they call sidewalks because everybody goes everywhere all the time by car. But the Bible doesn't say this is the way, drive in it. It doesn't say this is the way flying it. It doesn't say this is the way swimming it. It says this is the way walking it. Because walking is an everyday, day-to-day -day progression. I would like to give you something that's dynamic and fresh and excites you. But I think that what you need today is direction. And if you've come for direction... This is the way, walk in it. In John chapter 14, starting at verse 4, these are the words that we hear. Jesus said, and where I go, you know, and the way, you know. Now, the next part of this scripture is very interesting because the person speaking is not somebody who's just rocked up uh, for this sermon that Jesus is giving. This isn't somebody who's just turned up uh, and been around for a week or so. 
This is one of Jesus' trusted disciples who had been following him. So maybe like this trusted disciple, you would echo these words with him. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going and how can we know the way? Let me just say that uh, in today's world, there are many ways that you can walk down. There are many philosophies that you can follow. Uh, There are lots of programs that you can engage yourself. Brother Sean uh, alluded to New Year's resolutions. And, uh, of course, this is the diet time of year, isn't it, where people resolve uh, and they choose to go on this program or this program or that program to lose weight. There are lots of different programs and lots of different ideas to do lots of different things in life. But Jesus is saying, you know where I'm going and you know the way. But Thomas says, I'm not really sure that I do know. So Jesus says these words and he makes it very simple and very straightforward. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. So I'm here to tell you today that if you are interested in knowing God as your Father, if you are interested in a relationship with Almighty God, if your being here today is because you are saying, I want to know how I am, can know God and follow God, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light. And he's the life, sorry, he is also the light as well, but he's the life according to this scripture here. So this is the way that we are to walk in, uh, and this is the path uh, that we are to take. Uh, Now, I'm just going to say a few things for just a short time. I realize that unless, as many of you aren't, unless you're at the front row, uh, let me just say this, that Sister Gorgeous here and Sister Rihanna are not only spiritual people, you know, being at the front, but they're just plain wise. You know there are two major heaters here, folks. Does that entice anybody to come closer? Come on, Sister Melanie, enjoy the warmth of the front here. Amen. There you, now you see, there's a sensible lady. Is there anybody else in this place who's got sense to come to the front and warm themselves? Anyway, all I was saying was this. All I was saying was this, that I'm not going to take very long. Of course, at the back there, you've got the heater that's at the back there, so you're doing all right there. I hope you haven't turned that round just to face you, Sister Wynne. Oh, she's got her water bottle. Amen. Has anybody else brought their water bottle to church? (laughs) But Jesus is telling us that he is the way the truth and the life. And also God is telling us that if we want to know where we should go and how we should travel, that there will be guidance given to us. God is not going to leave you to work this out on your own. He is going to speak into your heart and speak into your life. Now, not everybody has the example and the experience of Samuel as a young boy. Not everybody is called to the kind of ministry that even though he's in the Old Testament, Samuel represents where God called out his name. But let me tell you this, that God knows your name. He knows your address. He knows your postcode. He knows your mobile number as well, by the way. Although let me tell you, you don't need your mobile on in church. Because if God wants to speak to you, he doesn't usually use mobile phones. But he knows your mobile. He knows your email address. And God spoke to Samuel and called out his name. And when God called Samuel, he didn't abandon him. He gave the young boy direction in his life. And some of you here are sitting in these seats because you have been calling out to God. Some of you who are listening uh, to me this morning and online have in fact been spending time fasting and praying this week and looking to God. 
God, I need direction. Uh, let me say to you that God is going to give you direction and help and guidance in your life. Uh, and he says to you today, this is the way. Walk in it. Now, walking, as I've said a few uh, weeks ago, is actually a very complicated thing. You may not believe me, but walking is an incredibly a complex coordination of muscles and coordination of our head and moving your... I mean, you just take it for granted, don't you? Until you find that walking in this isn't as easy as it used to be. Yeah. You'll pardon the reference to my family, but my father had a fall about nine, not nine months ago, but he had a fall and he broke uh, his leg, which meant he had to have a partial hip replacement and replacing his hip, uh, he's actually got one leg shorter than the other now. Uh, and walking just isn't as straightforward as it used to be. Uh, just isn't as straightforward. And I can see my dad struggling to do that, which he always used to do. Uh, and here, me, I'm getting old. I've got something. I don't know what's wrong with me, uh, but I'm speaking healing for myself. But at the moment, if I put my foot down, uh, I've got a bit of a tender heel. And I just have to think about walking. You say, you think about, yeah, you've got to think about walking, how you go about doing it. But walking is something that you just take for granted until it becomes difficult. Why? Because walking is one step after another step after another step. It's steady. It's deliberate unless you're just wandering around. Mind you, I'm sure those of you, now uh, you'll pardon us, these fine young ladies here, just, just humor us for a minute, please. But we've all had this experience that we wander somewhere and we say, why have I come here? Now, Rhiannon is looking at me blank because she's too young to know this experience. But Brother Pete, he can preach with me on this one. You wander into a place and you think, why am I here? Now, now please don't think we're going batty here in the Birmingham Lighthouse. But it will happen to all of us eventually. Patron is thinking, Lord, I pray for Brother Mark in the name of Jesus. May the Lord help him. Do you know what I've found helps, Pete? Pete, I don't know if you do this. Go back from where you came and then walk back the same way. <laughs> oh, that's why I'm here. But we're not called to just wander around aimlessly. God says he will direct us and guide us and help us. And that is why today Brother Pete's teaching was so excellent. Uh, sorry, Brother Sean's uh, teaching was... <laughs> I've forgotten who was teaching already this morning. <laughs> That's why his teaching was so excellent, because in praying, we find God's direction and his guidance. Now, let me tell you about God's direction and guidance. It's not always easy, and it's not going to make you top of the popular popularity charts. Jesus was the greatest man to walk on earth, and he was crucified. He was the most godly man that ever lived, and yet he was challenged as to his relationship with God, whether he even had a relationship with God. And Paul, who was probably, arguably, one of the greatest missionaries that ever lived on this earth, it tells us in Acts chapter 19, uh, and about that time there arose a great commotion about the way for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines of Diana, brought no small profit to the craftsmen. Now, first of all, let me point this out to you if you haven't picked this up already. In the book of Acts, the early Christians were oftentimes known as the people of the way. That's oftentimes how people outside and also within the circle of those who were believers referred to themselves, the people of the way. 
Now, what happened was that Paul is in Ephesus and he's preaching the way. He's preaching Jesus. He's preaching things that we believe to be fundamentally important and people are responding to it uh, and changing their lives uh, and walking with God. And we would probably say, amen, that's a great thing. The problem was that in turning to God, people were turning away in this case from idolatry. They were turning away from the worship of Diana and uh, Demetrius was a silversmith who made silver idols of the great goddess Diana and he was finding that business was going down the tubes. So he, in fact, incited people against this way. Let me tell you that if you do what is right and you do what God wants you to do, and you do what is correct before Almighty God, it does not mean that you're going to become super popular. It doesn't mean that you're going to become super esteemed by other people. But what it does mean is that you're going to be walking with God, and you're going to know God, and you're going to know the things that only God can give to you. Uh, There are things that this world can give you. Fame, If you're talented or you've got special abilities, the world will be happy to heap upon you fame. Uh, But fame comes with a great price uh, as you don't have to read the tabloids too often to realize. Uh, The world can give you recognition. The world can do many things for you. uh, But the world can't give you peace on the inner man. Uh, The world can't give you righteousness before God. The world can't give you a joy that when everything's going wrong, you have a joy that keeps you. Let me tell you how this way can become part of your life. In the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, it tells us in Mark chapter 1 and verse 1, uh, the prophet said these words, Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before me. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. This is actually the introduction to Mark's gospel. The introduction of Mark telling us about John the Baptist. And John's task is to introduce Jesus. And his introduction of Jesus is to preach these words. Behold, it says, the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. In other words, John the Baptist was saying, this is the way, walk in it. Now, I would like to say that this is a lovely uh, a lovely self-edifying message that John preached. Uh, This was one that affirmed you uh, as a person uh, and confirmed you as being a a self-actualized being with great meaning and great promise on this earth. But actually, it was a straightforward message. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and turn from that which you know is wrong and do what is right. Repentance isn't an attractive word, but ultimately it's a wonderful word. But there are many things that would seek to entice us. I've noticed that um, nowadays so many things that are clearly uh, not good are dressed up to look awesome, are dressed up to look amazing, are dressed up to look enticing, are dressed up to look just as if it's the best thing since sliced bread. But actually, John the Baptist said, no, if you want God's way, you have to repent. You have to turn away from what you know is wrong and turn to Almighty God. You have to believe the gospel. And in fact, the first words of Jesus to the people of the time was, repent and believe the gospel. Uh, Let me tell you that the word of God to you is, 
repent. That is a word of God to everybody here. That is a daily experience to turn away from sin and turn to God and look to him. As Jesus said, enter in by the narrow gate. And it tells us, for the wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there are that go in by it. We have a narrow way. It's not a way that's made popular. It's not a way that's made easy. We're not trying to make it difficult, but we're saying that you have to go in by the narrow gate and by the straight path, which is the difficult way, the way of righteousness and the way of truth. This is the way. Walk in it. Why? Because repentance is the beginning of serving God. Why? Because repentance is the beginning of turning away from that which distracts us from God and turns us to that which is right, which is God himself. Let me tell you that the next step after repenting and putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and trusting in him is to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And also, the Bible tells us that God will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that spirit is God not behind you, not beside you, not in front of you, but it is God within you speaking to you. This is the way, walk in it. I can remember as a young man, uh, having just been saved a few months, uh, coming into an environment that was completely foreign to my experience in God. And in fact, my experience was completely foreign to everything that was around about me. In fact, just about everything that surrounded me said, you are wrong, your experience is wrong, and you actually need to just change the way you are now. But there was something inside of me and an experience that had changed my life so much that I could not deny that this was the way, the way that God had given me. And I want to say to you that there is a way uh, that God has for you. Uh, and as you are sitting here with questions in your heart, the answer is, this is the way, walk in it. This is the way walk in it. Isaiah prophesied and he said that there was going to be a highway. Sounds almost contrary to the uh, words of Jesus when he said it's a narrow way, but he's trying to emphasize the importance of what he's declaring. There's going to be a highway and a road, and it will be called the highway of holiness. The unclean will not pass over it, but it will be for others. Whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. Let me say this to you. You don't have to be an intellectual. You don't have to have GCSEs and A-levels. You don't have to have education. Even though you may be looked upon as somebody who is maybe even thought of foolish, you will not go astray because God speaks to you in a language and in a way that you know. God will guide you and direct you. God will help you. It tells us that no lion will be there. Uh, I want to tell you that when you are walking the way of the Lord Jesus, he will protect you and keep you from that which seeks to damage you. Uh, and then it tells us this, but the redeemed shall walk there. Redeemed is a word that... Um, means very little outside of church now. At one time, it meant a little bit to some people who were uh, maybe at some point had to pawn a piece of um, uh, jewelry or something just to get some money. But nowadays, the word redeem seems to have very little value outside uh, of uh, the church world. Uh, 
But let me tell you about redemption. Let me tell you that you are so valuable to God, that you mean so much to him that he paid the ultimate price to have you as his own, to have you belong to him. The Bible tells us that scarcely for a righteous man, some would dare to die. But God commends his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So in other words, the Bible is declaring to us that God loves us so much that he paid the price to buy us to himself. The redeemed of the Lord shall walk and the ransomed of the Lord shall return. And it tells us they will come to Zion with singing. Amen. I love the fact that Sean was telling us earlier on about singing in prayer. Now, some of us don't sing well, but singing is an illustration of something that is locked up in the heart. Amen. That wants to rejoice in what God has done. And then it tells us that everlasting joy will be on their heads and they will obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and mourning will flee away. This is not a panacea for all difficulties in life. This is not uh, something that tells you that you will not have any more troubles. In fact, Jesus prayed specifically for his disciples, that in the world, when they had troubles, they would be kept in those troubles. But there is something that God gives us that will help us through the troubles that we will face and will bring us with joy through those things and with gladness for his glory and honor. So let me say to you, those of you today that are here and those of you who are online, if you've been seeking God for guidance, maybe you've even cried out to God. Uh, I remember, uh, I didn't intend to share this, and I hope you don't mind me uh, sharing a personal um, illustration. I can remember very clearly I was in Los Angeles, actually, at the time, and things had not gone how I thought they should go. I don't know why I thought that I thought things should go this way or that way. I was not a Christian. I did not believe in God. But I can remember the night that I walked out of the place where I was staying and I can remember walking up this hillside. I haven't got the foggiest idea where it is, except it was in Los Angeles. And saying, God, why have you done this to me? Does that make sense? I was not a believer. In fact, I lived quite opposite to how God wanted me to. I did not believe in him and I did not trust in him. But do you know what I think? I think God very graciously heard the words of a rebellious young man and showed him why he allowed these things to happen in his life so that he might walk in the way. And a few months later, God brought me to the right place that I needed to be. And just to show you the power of God that changes our heart, when I got a, a lift with a, a Pentecostal minister, this ungodly young man, as soon as I heard that he was a minister of the gospel, I said to him, Andy, how come you're not telling me about Jesus? Hallelujah. Let me tell you that wherever you're coming from, wherever your journey has brought you to this point, if you come with a heart saying, God, I need guidance from you. God is saying, this is the way, walk in it. This is the way, make steps forward in it. This is the way, commit your life to me. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, 
and the life. Let's stand, shall we, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and let us just close our eyes and lift up our hands to heaven. And let's say, Lord Jesus, I need you and I need your direction in my life. Uh, and I am praying to you right now uh, for your guidance and for your help uh, and your strength in the name of Jesus. Lord, I want to thank you that you have placed this message in my heart today to speak to people, Lord God, about their desire to walk with you and to live for you. And today, as you are speaking into our hearts and lives, help us, O oh God, to hear your voice for your glory and for your honor and for your praise in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's just keep on seeking after God.